from war and peace, Downton still stands and the Crawleys are still in it. Cora, oh, Mother, how lovely to see you. As long as it is. Robert, aren't you going to kiss me? With the greatest enthusiasm. Tell me, where does this come from? I hired it in Liverpool. Why? Oh, I thought it might be a gift from the US government to help get Britain back on its feet. <laughs> Carson and Mrs. Hughes, the world has moved on since last we met. And we have moved on with it, madam. Really? <laughs> it seems so strange to think of the English embracing change. Mrs. Hughes, this is my maid, Reed. Sybil, tell me all about the arrangements for the birth. We do these things so much better in the States. Edith, still no one special? Oh, well, never mind. You must take a tip from the modern American girl. Oh, Mary, dearest Mary, now you tell me all of your wedding plans and I'll see what I can do to improve them. Do explain again how exactly you are related to all of us, Mr. Crawley. Rather distantly, I'm afraid, my... Great-great-grandfather was a younger son of the third Earl. <laughs> My. I'm going to have to write that down so I can study it. Look at our page in Burke's. You'll find Matthew there. Good, because I would so like to understand why he gets to inherit my late husband's money. <laughs> I know. It's funny, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Not everyone shares your sense of humour. But surely it doesn't matter now that they're getting married. In fact, we'd better turn him out, or it'll be bad luck for tomorrow. Quite right. You must be the chauffeur I've heard so much about. I am, ma'am. Tom's the journalist now, Grandmama. Oh, well, well. I've heard of those journeys on my side of the water. It's very pleasant to hear of them happening here. I was so afraid I was going to be late. Oh, dear. I'm afraid the war has made old women of us both. Oh, I wouldn't say that, but then I always keep out of the sun. <laughs> yeah, how'd you find Downton on your return? Much the same, really. Probably too much the same, but then I don't want to cast a pall over all the happiness. How could you ever do that? Tell me, what do you think of young Lochinvar, who has so ably carried off our granddaughter and our money? Oh, do you approve of him? Not as much as you will, when you get to know him. Hmm. Has he gone home to change? Oh, no, we won't see him again tonight. The groom never sees the bride the night before the wedding. <laughs> Nothing ever alters for you people, does it? Revolutions erupt and monarchies crash to the ground and the groom still cannot see the bride before the wedding. You Americans never understand the importance of tradition. Yes, we do. We just don't give it power over us. History and tradition took Europe into a world war. Maybe you should think about letting go of its hand. So how did you enjoy the south of France? It was lovely, but almost too hot even now. I think it's such a shame they close things up during the summer. I love the sun. So we can see. Oh, you couldn't be in Cannes in the summer. No one could bear it. I could. Just how long is she here for? Who knows? No guests should be admitted without the date of their departure settled. You won't get any argument from me. <laughs> There's a hideous pile of post, I'm afraid. I put it on the hall table. Don't look at it tonight. What have you been up to? As a matter of fact, I found myself a new occupation. But I'm afraid Cousin Violet doesn't think it's quite appropriate. Can we talk about it afterwards? Are there still forbidden subjects in 1920? I can't believe this. I speak of taste rather than law. Well, it's not my taste. What about you, Cora? I agree with Mama. Some subjects are not suitable for every ear. Oh, pas de bon les domestiques. <laughs> Come on, my dear. Carson and Alfred know more about life than we ever will. Can't we stop this? How? It's like a runaway train. Then you'd be had some coal, or gravel, or tin. Well, I can think of someone who's got plenty of tin. So, you help women who have 
fallen over. Not quite. Cousin Isabel helps women who've had to degrade themselves to survive. There's a center in York. Oh, no addresses, please, or Alfred will be making notes. So what do you do for these women? Well, first we like to send them away to rest. I should think they need it. And then we try to find them alternative employment. The war destroyed many households, and thousands of families, the breadwinners, are mm. dead. So you want me to contribute? You don't have to give money after every conversation, Mother. No? Isn't that what the English expect of rich Americans? My darling girl, what's this? I think you know what it is, since you asked Sir Anthony to write. Edith, you do understand that I only ever want what's best for you. And you're the judge of that? In this, I think I am. Sybil marries a chauffeur, and you welcome him to Downton. But when I'm in love with a gentleman, you cast him into the outer darkness. She has a point, Robert. Strallon is certainly a gentleman. Well, besides which, Edith tells me he has a house, he has money, he has a title, everything that you care about. You make me sound very shallow. Aren't you? When you make me give him up because he has a bad arm. Oh, it's not the only reason. He's a quarter of a century too old. Did she tell you that? Your daughter is sad and lonely, Robert. Now, I don't mean to interfere, but... Don't you? If you ban him from Downton, I'll only go to his house. I mean it. I don't believe he'd see you. And I'll just wait outside until he does. How can you not like him because of his age? When almost every young man we grew up with is dead. Do you want me to spend my life alone? I didn't say I don't like him. I like him very much. So do I, Papa. Well, so do I. Please, ask him back. He writes he's not coming to Mama's dinner, but please make him. Please, please, please. Oh, all right, then. Oh, you two are dressed for a barbecue. And I feel like a Chicago bootlegger. I don't even know what that means, but it sounds almost as peculiar as you look. Robert, come quickly. What is it? Apparently, the oven's broken down. It can't have done. What does that mean? To cut a long story short, it means we have no food. Oh, funny clothes and no food. Should be quite an evening. Thank you, Mother. <clears throat> Nothing's cooked. And nothing's going to be cooked. But surely... Shall we just tell them to go home? No, Cora, please, come on. They've come for a party. We're going to give them a party. Carson, mm -hmm. clear the table. You go down to the larders. You bring up bread, fruit, cheese, chicken, ham, whatever's edible. We're going to have an indoor picnic. They're going to eat whatever they want, wherever they want, all over the house. Are you quite sure, madam? It's not really how we do it. How you used to do it? Oh, come on. It might be fun. I agree. We'll all pull together and it'll be great fun. Yes. Now, I know what we need. Does anyone here play the piano? Oh, Mama, this is so exactly not what we wanted the evening to be. If it's the end of your undignified campaign, I won't be sorry. We can't just give up. Certainly not. Oh, do you think I might have a drink? Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought you were a waiter. Now, all of you, find whatever it is you want to eat and take it wherever you want to sit. Anywhere. Anywhere. All over the house. If any of you have ever wanted to explore Downton Abbey, this is your chance. I'm sorry if it's all a bit casual. It's exciting, Lord Grantham. I feel like one of those bright young people they write about in the newspapers. <laughs> Thank you, Lady Melville. Cheer up. She won't be here forever. But how much damage will be done before she goes? Let me fall in sweetheart, I'm in love with you. Let me hear you whisper that you love me too.
But of course, I'll help you any way I can. Thank heaven. Oh, it seems our family owes Downton's survival to the Levinsons not once, but twice. <laughs> no, I'm so sorry, but you've misunderstood me. No, I cannot rescue Downton. It's a shame if it has to go, but I can't. But why not? Because your grandpa tied the money down. He felt that the Crawley family had quite enough. But you said you'd help us. I can entertain all of you in Newport and in New York, and I can add to Cora's dress allowance, but that's all. My income might be generous, but I cannot touch the capital. Besides Mary, the world has changed. These houses were built for another age. <sighs> Are you quite sure you want to continue with the bother of it all? Quite sure. If I were you and I knew I was going to lose it, I should look on the sunny side. Both of our husbands tied the money up tight before they were taken. Lord Grantham wasn't taken. He died. This evening has made me homesick for America. It's time to go. I don't suppose you want some whiskey to take to bed? Oh, but I'd love one. No water. Thank you. I'm sorry I can't help you keep Downton, Robert. That's what Mary wanted. Ah. Oh, I thought there was something. You know, the way to deal with the world today is not to ignore it. If you do, you'll just get hurt. Sometimes I feel like a creature in the wilds whose natural habitat is gradually being destroyed. Some animals adapt to new surroundings. It seems a better choice than extinction. I don't think it is a choice. I think it's what's in you. Well, let's hope that what's in you will carry you through these times to a safer shore. <laughs>